alive now, finally. What a day. All right. Go to my channel. There is my face. Turn my sound off. Get rid of top chat. Go into live chat. And then just wait and see who's there. <laughs> Because I am two minutes early. Uh oh, what did I just do? Give me a second, guys, because I'm finishing the description. It was just a lot easier <laughs> to try to do it on here. Come on. Now let me back into my life. Out of the studio. Okay, we'll do it this way. Go to my channel. <laughs> Picky computers. <laughs> And now I got to follow what I just typed. Uh, make sure you're in live chat and not top chat. There we go. Oh, and thumbs up my own video. <laughs> Hello, Bren. Yeah, apparently Nate gave me a new name. <laughs> or is or is Bren uh, somebody actually here? <laughs> I stopped in at, at Patrick's. How much snow did we get? Um, I think there was, before it turned to ice, um, about three in the morning. Um, I was up way too late. Uh, I think we had three, maybe four inches, and then, and then it started to just sleet um, overnight, so... Oh, the real life pile in the background? Yep, if you have not seen my very first video, this is what happens when you inherit three estates worth of stuff. You get downsized out of a job, so the storage unit has to go somewhere. Yeah! <laughs> and there, and that room, and the dining room, and the what had been an extra bedroom, and there's stuff in my room, and in the master bedroom, and in the attic and yeah 
I don't call them a death pile, though. Technically, death was how I got a lot of this stuff. But I, I call them my treasure trove, uh, my resource pile. Death pile just, just sounds so bad <laughs> in a way. It's too negative. <laughs> it's my resource pile. <laughs> oh, so is everybody getting their hellos in? You'll have to forgive me if I'm a little wonky tonight. Um, I went to bed at 5 a.m., slept two hours, and because the house was cold, both cats thought they were going to sleep with me, but the doctor, being the coward and idiot that she is, had a hissing fit because Gandalf was already on the bed, and... <sighs> And when I thought I could take a nap this afternoon, I've been trying to pull stuff together for the sale. I made the I made the preview video and went, that's it. I'm done. I'm just showing what little I got here and I'm going to bed. I'll figure it out tomorrow. So, <laughs> and my hips started bothering me. So I ended up, I took a muscle relaxer and then thought, great, I, I can, I don't go to work till five. I can take a nap. Soon as that thought hit my head, the phone goes and makes that little noise for a text message. And I went, oh, I wonder what my son wants. Because he's the only one usually. It's not my son. I look at it. It's work. Hey, can you be here by three? <laughs> Crap. <laughs> but uh, with the ice and snow, of course, somebody called out. So they let me come in and be three to eight. Leave at eight, which, of course, I didn't leave on time. I finally got home about 8.30. I was asleep by 9 with the alarm set for 10. And doesn't the doctor come flying in the room, hop up on the bed, and land on me at 9.30? I've had half an hour sleep. <laughs> so I do have a little bit more than what you saw in on the little picture of what's here on the side of the table. I don't really have numbers on everything yet. so. But I have my numbers written down. I have I have that part already. Um, so so that'll work. But I also uh, if I write out a stuff over here on the table, we can have a real fun with a mystery sale because I went into a box, a couple of boxes, and I just started grabbing stuff. <laughs> So we can have a mystery sale because I won't know what it is till I unwrap it either. <laughs> How often do you get to do that at a live sale where the seller doesn't even know what's going on? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been that kind of day. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be that kind of night. <laughs> but I have the next two days off. And, and I'm going to tell him my phone died. <laughs> Not going to let him call me in again. But uh, in my area, being as urban as it is, um, all the major roads are clear. Uh, my street's clear. You know, it's not where we park because we're the only house on the whole street that doesn't have a driveway. So... Um, we have to park on the street. So when they plowed, they couldn't do white right where our cars sit, but all the roads are clear. Now I do deserve to rest. I also get very, very sore. I, now we only had the one NyQuil disco ball. Um, I have some of the typical symptoms for lupus, but they're not severe. So the test for it is weird. It comes back within, not within normal, but not high enough, whatever it is they're looking for to definitively say I have lupus. But if I'm in the sunlight, you know, I don't get a heavy rash, but all this gets all dry in that butterfly shape. I get blisters on my skin. Um, if I'm in the sunlight too long, especially if I don't have any kind of sunscreen, I get the, the odd muscle aches, which is what I've got right now. Um, so um, they test me uh, they're so sure that I probably have it that they test me every six months. I have the script sitting on my other desk over there. Um, so, so yeah. <laughs> mm. 
So I have I have too much crap wrong with me. But keeps me from being boring. Who has not seen the NyQuil disco ball since you're talking about it? Who has not seen it? Because it's still sitting next to me. Because if you want, I'll show those who have not seen the NyQuil disco ball. Because that thing was just too funny. Julie Day Trip Vintage. You haven't. Tina B hasn't. I will. I'm, I'm very gentle with it. So this was in two boxes of stuff, the Christmas stuff that a friend gave me that we took care of yesterday. This is made with all these old little cups from NyQuil. And I can tell you, it's got to be older because the NyQuil, um, they just, they have the numbers on the side. They've got all the little numbers for the measurements on them. But I think the NyQuil, the way they make them now, I think the cups are a little bit different size. But everything is stuck in there with a vintage pearl-ended hat pin and a little spangly thing. And it's just a styrofoam ball inside. <laughs> so it's, uh, it is just, it's just so 1970s. I think, I still think Diana should put just a little sprig of mistletoe hanging off here. And she'd have a very 1970s Christmas decoration. <laughs> I, I, I remember that. I mean, because my mother was big on letting me do like all kinds of little arts and crafts stuff in the magazines that she'd get. And if there was one she thought I could do, she'd just say, here, you know, here's the stuff, figure it out. So <laughs> that thing is a trip. <laughs> oh, well, let me move these linens. They're kind of, no, I don't want to get glitter all over them. We'll sit them up there. They're kind of a hot mess right now. But uh, it's, uh, that was an interesting sale yesterday. <laughs> that was definitely an interesting sale. It's going to make up for the fact that I probably will not be able to have a sale the next two Thursdays because of the way the holidays run. But... We'll see. If nothing else, we I might come on just to chit chat for an hour and say hello to everybody. So as soon as you hit 60, you've been glitter crazy. <laughs> oh, I've been glitter crazy for a long time and I'm not quite there yet to 60. So let's see. What's the first item over here? First, oh, the first item. Oh, sequins I'm kind of sick of. My mother was a professional seamstress. And for five years, she had a band of mummers, Philadelphia mummers that she did. And having to sew all those sequins. 28 guys. <laughs> that was That was a bit much. <laughs> so we have um we have now they are they are home co this one has a sticker it says made in sri lanka but i think it's so cute because it's kind of the whole little family set and i didn't realize it he's sitting on an easter egg so you have the little boy you have the little baby boy. You have big sister, and she's got a little chick in the... Okay, somebody is having a live chit-chat. Okay, good, but get out of the way of my... my ah, stop it! <laughs> stop popping up! No! So, because I just turned the laptop on. All the all the updates of who's doing what that I'm subscribed to, and if there's comments on my things, they're all popping up. <laughs> mummers. Oh, how do I describe mummers? 
Mummers are a Philadelphia tradition for the New Year's Day parade in Philly. There are different kinds. Mom worked with a group that were what they called Comic Brigade. So they didn't necessarily have a band. They Well, they were small. Comic Brigades are often small. But they... They... I... I mean, it's like a drag queen just like um, attacked an ostrich feather and and sequin factory. I can't e I can't explain mummers. M U M M E R S. Just type in mummers, New Year's, or mummers and parade. I guarantee you, something on Google is going to pop up and be a Philadelphia New Year's Day parade, and you will see mummers because i i just i grew up with it and i can't explain it i can't explain it <laughs> watch some of my vo first videos mostly caught up now on the tree attic and inherited estates okay i have one to do about the tree because the tree is gone the tree is gone no you do not need to pre-register to buy however um, Diana said she lost her Wi-Fi and is restarting and trying to get back in. Oh, okay. Um, I do prefer that if you can make sure as soon as you have bought something, take a second and shoot me the email right then. Doesn't matter if you buy anything later, just so I have your information because I make a list and I write down exactly who got what. So I can add all that that you get later. But I found that helps people remember, especially if you only get one item, it's very easy to forget and, and not remember to send, a, send the email right away. And um, do remember that Verizon is spelled with a Z. Um, one of the reasons I have gotten late emails is be or tr people having trouble with the email is because they're putting an S in the middle of Verizon, but it actually has a Z in the middle. So, Donna, Donna, let me see. Did I get your email? Donna, Donna, Donna. Donna, Donna. Hmm. Where is... No, I did not get firewood from the tree. Donna and Durrance. Um, I don't see an email from you. That's from Purple Love. Donna Dream Times 3 has subscribe to your youtube let me check the spam folder real quick nope that's empty yes stream yard i know my limit is approaching all right vintage crazed doggone happy vintage antiques that sounds like such a great name for a store. Doggone happy vintage and antiques. I would shop there. Tina B, yeah, I have I have yours, I believe. So, but Donna and Dorrance, I'm not. So my email, if you look at the screen, I have it in the bottom corner of the feed. And then Katie... And Diana both will put it into, at times they'll put it into the chat. But it's nbk1965 at verizon.net. And it's that Verizon that catches a lot of people because people either spell it with an S, but it has a Z in the middle, or they put .com, and it's not .com, it's .net. Because that's how I kept screwing it up, and it was my own email. Whoops. Don't want to mess that up because it's easier for me to read the chat on the laptop, which is why I keep looking down. All right, let's go here. Let's have some fun. So we have these little ones. 
That one's got the truck. He's sitting on the Easter egg. And you've got the little sister who's got the little chick, teeny little chick that she's holding inside an egg. And then I guess you have mom and dad just chilling, him with his, him holding the pipe and her just stitching away. And then you have this one who seems an oddball, but was in the bag with them. You have a little doctor, you have a little doctor bear. I don't know why you have the little doctor bear, but I do think, I do think the little family, come back here, little kid. He's okay. Little baby fell over. But I do think that they are kind of cute and are make a nice, cute little Easter grouping of little bears. So this little bag of bears, they're $6 and they're number 10. It's $6 number 10 for the little Easter bear family. You know, they're all ready to celebrate Easter. Slide them carefully back down into their bag. Six dollars, number ten, for the little bear grouping. Okay. Um, where did I put you? Oh, there you are. You're so little. I think somehow I missed him when I had the first sale and I had all those elephants because I'm pretty sure this little guy is from that. Get his number off the bottom of him. But he's just a little thing. He's resin. I love that the tail is all this frou-frou. It's just a little feathery tail. It also looks like he's wearing shoes, like real shoes. But it's a really kind of detailed face, little hat. And he's got glitter all over his body. He's just a cute little guy. Even if you don't want to use him as an ornament, he'd be he's just such a cute little thing. So this little elephant is four dollars and is number thirty. Four dollars, number thirty for the cute little elephant ornament. He is a fancy little thing. He's cute. Four dollars, number thirty. All right. He does have that kind of steampunk thing going on, doesn't he? Now, now we have this. Does have its made in Japan sticker? And is the light, oh, I should ask real quick, is the lighting on how you're seeing things okay? Because I changed how that light is a little bit. And I'm hoping I'm not too far in the dark. So, but it has now, it has little chips there, but they're under the glaze. They are definitely glazed right on over. So it's... Good, because I tried tweaking the lighting a little bit. Um, I tried talking my kid into getting me a ring light for Christmas, but I don't think I'm getting one because um, I don't have a winter coat. <laughs> it kind of fell apart. <laughs> the lining all shredded when I cleaned it. Um, so I think I'm getting a coat for Christmas, which I need more than a light. So this is eight inches, but it says Ocean City, Maryland. Which isn't to me the big deal, but what's cool is the image of the lighthouse. I think the lighthouse is really good looking. And this is all raised up. The clouds, the lighthouse, this is all dimensional. The little waves, it's really cool. So if you have, like lighthouses, this is, even though it says, you know, Ocean City, Maryland, maybe that is the lighthouse in Ocean City, Maryland. I haven't been there in a long long time so if you want this one it is four dollars number 32 four dollars number 32 the cool part about this is having this nice hole is this could be hung up on the wall as a decoration as well but four dollars for the made in japan it's got the old paper label on there too so it's an older one for the Ocean City Spoon Rest. 
serendipity you know i got I, I just still i think that's such a cool name <laughs> it's just such a fun word to say now does anybody do uh junk journaling is that what they call it where you're taking lots of old graphics or any well any kind of Close that any kind of thing where you need cool artwork because now this one's not in too bad a shape but these two the spines are completely shot but and you see inside these the the pictures i love the end papers the most i think the end papers are gorgeous so the end papers are illustrated, but you have all these great, and you can see this is foxing. All these little brown dots. Foxing is what happens when moisture gets in the old paper and it will create these little brown dots. Mm. But the, that's all in the core, in the very center. So you have all these great lithograph. They're all lithograph pages because these are from... Where is it? And and they are Whitman. They are from the Whitman Publishing Company. But this is... All right, let's see. The last copyright date in here is 1954. Uh, Roman numerals take a second to figure out. So you would get the blue book, Birds of America... You get the green book, Birds of America, which has different birds in it. Um, the green one has warblers, chickadees, kinglets, nuthatches, tanagers, thrushes. Sounds like a lot of the little stuff. The blue one has orioles, jays, juncos, grackles. But again, it's the same thing. Is You've got these wonderful images. And then... The yellow one is the one that's in the best shape. This one has the hummingbirds and quail and phoebes and um, swallows. But you've got great images there. But they're not, you know, they're, the two of them apparently have been very well loved. Because even the corners, you know, the corners aren't square. They're, they're on the edge there. So... These would be good for, you know, crafting. I don't recommend tearing a book apart if it's in great shape, but for something like this, you know, it's okay. So the bird books for the three of them are $6. They're number four. $6, number four, you get all three of these vintage Whitman bird books. Even the covers, even the covers have really neat pictures so i see a bunch of numbers coming up who has it netty has it netty okay netty has the bird books lay them down there now not to be outdone by by their birds we have trees we have the red and the blue for trees. Um, the red is broadleaf trees and no, the blue is broadleaf trees and the red is narrow leaf trees. So, and again, they're like this, this one's missing part of the front end paper. You know, this, this one, is that missing? No, it's not missing a page. They've got flowering dogwood, but again, it's really nice lithograph pages. So you've got some great looking. I did hear about Kelly of Found Again, and I just saw Michelle's of uh, Comfy Cozy Living. So, and see, you have that one. That's a holly. And uh, nice end papers. I love the end papers. But you don't need to be able to use like the one page that's there. 
So for the two Whitman Tree books, which are you guys from the same year? They're from 1956. So for the two tree books, it's $4, number 11. $4, number 11 for the two tree books. Okay. I used to do a lot of decoupage stuff, but I have not had the time since I got my nephew, pretty much. They did some while my mom was still alive, but without an extra set of hands around and a kid, that's a lot harder. Um, I have one of these neat little cookbooks, the Bantam Library of Culinary Arts on Honey. It has, um, it's, it's a nice little book. It is from... So first printing from DK, it's a DK book. They make great books. Uh, 1991, it has a little bit of a history of honey. It tells you different flowers that it comes from, can make different flavors. It has some great recipes. But I found in straightening things out that I actually had two of these. The only thing wrong with this is, and you can barely see it, there is in yellow ink where I ever had a yellow pen, there's a name and a date up in the corner. Um, so this, this honey book is $5 and it's number 13. It's $5 and number 13. It's in great shape. Um, it's other than that name being inscribed up in the corner in yellow ink. But if you like to cook with these, they're good. Kendra Joe. Okay. Yes, that's that book. Now we get into the fun of nothing else is numbered. <laughs> All right. So everything. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Come here. Come here. I'll need you later if I get to the linen. The tape measures in there. Okay. Let's get to some cutesy cute. I found these and they are absolutely well done and adorable, but there's no makers thing on here. And there is a name etched into the base. But let me tell you, whoever did this, I've never, these have to be old. I've never seen molds like this for anything where you could do, um, I'm taking the price sticker off. Because <laughs> these are a goodwill find. Half the ones that were on the shelf were broken. No, hon, you have it. Victoria H. Did you? Hmm. Hang on. To... Let me double check here. I. Belinda for number, yes, I did get Belinda for number 30 for the little elephant. Um, well, I got to scroll back up. Victoria H., remind me what it was that you were getting. I have a feeling I kind of know, but I'm not 100% sure. You're the one. Okay. No, hon, you didn't get, you, um, I've had so many emails because my Boy Scout stuff comes to the same email as all this stuff. That's going to get changed in the new year. But, um, but I, I knew I still had to take care of that Fenton, but I had not gotten it. And I kept 
trying to backtrack and find your email, but I didn't remember the name that I was looking for. Victoria. All right, now I'll be able to find the email because because that's that's for that blue Fenton piece. All right, thank you. So anyway, about these, um, they the only thing on the base is. Scratched in down here, it says Violet. But look how pretty she is. Isn't she adorable? Little tiny, you know, all of this is ceramic. Even the little tiny earrings. It's all ceramic. And she's beautifully painted. All her little fingers are there. There's no chips. There's no cracks. She's a bisque finish, but not. I, she's smooth. She's really smooth. Most bisque has kind of a rough feel. But she's just so pretty. And so delicate looking. And, and she's really, I mean, she's not that heavy. Because can you see how thin that, that little edge is? But I honestly, it, I, I've tried searching. I couldn't find anything on anything else like this. Um, so these two are gonna, they're gonna be separately, done separately, but these are, these are gonna be offer ups simply because I got nothing. I, I found nothing on these and I've, I've never found anything where, and she's a lot lighter weight, she's a little thinner. She is supposed to be a gypsy girl. But she's just wonderful. And like I said, they they seem like they would be bisque because they don't have a glaze. But they're smooth. They don't have that rough texture that most bisque has. But she's just wonderful. And I can't get over that those earrings are intact as well as her fingers. So she's going to be an offer up and we're going to start her at $5. For the little gypsy girl, as soon as Katie hits start in there. She is, let's see here. She is five and a quarter inches tall. She's just absolutely adorable. Absolutely adorable. I mean, she, she just, they captured her like really looking like she's just in motion. She's just so good looking. And, and the face, I don't know if you can see it the, because of the lighting puts her face in shadow. She's even got the tiniest little bit of blush on her cheeks. Somebody really was good at their craft to, to actually make her look so realistic. And from I could tell from the glare from the light, it doesn't do her justice at all. It really doesn't. So I see uh, precious lavender buttons at nine. Because I'm looking and, and I'm looking on my laptop and on the laptop, she looks paler than she is. But she's just lovely. And just such a neat piece. So she's sprayed with matte finish. Is that what they do? Victoria H for 10. Precious lavender buttons for 11. Time to run now. Oh, there's the stop from Katie. She'll refresh and she'll let me know. And that is our little gypsy girl. Precious lavender for 11. Now, while she's out parading around as gypsy, 
her sister here, her sister's a little heavier. Because you can see this is a little thicker. She's She's got a little more weight to her. But she is about the same size, the same kind of finish. She's been off busy picking apples. And again, I mean, look at look at the details of that face. Tiny little eyelashes. Um, she's got she again also has that light blush to her cheeks. Just absolutely beautiful. You could see where the apron is. The funny part I thought about this apron was the fact that the apron. The, the pinafore apron is not tied around her waist, but it seems like it's tied around the bustle of her dress. But it, she's got the apple in her hand even, and, and just really not a mark on her, not a scratch, not a chip, nothing. She's just in great shape. So this one, uh, the apple girl will also go up, start at $5 when Katie starts the timer. It's made by the same person. It does say, it does have violet etched in, and I don't think you can even see that. It has violet etched in at the bottom, but there's no other numbers, nothing to tell me anything about it. And I've tried for the last, I've had these guys for two months now trying to search for them, and I can find nothing like them anywhere. So the timer is going. She started for $5, the little apple girl. She's uh, the same size, I'm pretty sure. Well, she's a little shorter, I think, by like a hair. <laughs> she's just over five inches. Matte spray is for anything that looks alive. Well, they certainly did that with her. She's even got little tiny curls on her forehead, which... Um, I don't think you can see, but just really so well done. So pretty. So we've got Gina Marie is at five. Precious Lavender is at seven. And, and it's the same person who made the other one. There were a couple more by the time I saw them, but most of them had, had gotten damaged being bounced around in Goodwill. Um, and, and somebody else was there, had picked a few as well. So just a few more seconds to go for our Apple Girl. And, oh, oh, I think it's going to be close. We had two people here battling. Let me know, Katie. Where is our apple, apple girl going? <coughs> Debbie Vitali. I don't know that name. Hello. Okay, there's Donna's email. And let's double check one thing real quick. Come on now. Okay. Good. Then that's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to keep your girls in touch. <laughs> Weren't they really cute? I mean, they just really were. Really, really cute. Now, let's see. Um, what else is in the box? So I only have one of these. 
because my aunt took all the others, so I was only ever allowed to get one, but I was smart enough to get one from the top of the cabinet that had never been used. It's one of those, what, what does Jeffrey call them? Swanky swigs? Is that what they call them? I don't know who makes it. There's no maker's mark on the bottom, but it's a yellow pansies on the drinking glass. And this one still has all the shine that you want to see. It doesn't look like it's really, I'm trying to see in the light if there's any wear. I don't see any scratches on anything. And it doesn't really look like there's any fading. The green is always the first to fade. So the green looks pretty good, but, um, but I'd, like I said, I don't know who made these. There's a whole series of flower glasses and this one happens to be pansy and it even, it even says it on there and it's five inches high. Yeah, I don't know if this these are swanky swigs or is it the little juice glasses that are swanky swigs? I'm not sure. I yeah, I think they really do kind of have that look like looking like a face. Except that one looks to be really kind of ticked off. <laughs> that one's that one's not happy that that one's laughing at it. <laughs> they do look like they've got different faces. <laughs> But I know these are these are not these are not common to find so much. Um, I've seen them in the antique malls for twelve and fifteen dollars. But this one is in great shape, and there's there's no chips to the glass. There's no fading. There's no scratches. When you see it in the light, when you get it, you're going to notice that all this is nice and shiny, like it was new. I just have the one. My aunt took all the others and took them and sold them off upstate at an auction. But I got one. <laughs> and I've had one that has been in and out of my, uh, used to be in my china closet for a while, and then it had been packed away for a while. This has been living in a box under the bed for a long time now. <laughs> so I just have the one. And as I said, I've, I've seen them where they're anywhere from 12 to $15, but I just have the one great shape and I'm willing to, to have a lower price of have it at $8. It's $8 mm. for number eight for the pansy glass. They're in great shape. I just don't remember who this one is one of the best ones because of the fact it's got the faces. And we have Nettie. But yeah, my dad's mother had a whole series. She actually had two full sets. She had two of all the flowers she had. And um, I got that one from the top of the closet where it had been one, one she hadn't actually used. But I thought those faces on there looked fantastic. Um, let's see. Let's do, let's do another spoon rest. Now, it's marked Japan. It is an older one. It does have one thing wrong. This tip up here has like a dark spot and uh, it looks like a little rough spot right on the edge up there and right in here so what i think happened is when they hung it can i can you see that i'm not sure i can get that it's right inside i wondered if they hung it with a wire and had it hanging on the wall but it's it's really neat i i'm not sure the words are hand painted i suspect the words and the black and white lines are transfer, and then they painted into that. So you have the little flower up there, and then you have the little family. 
that says my kitchen is clean enough to be healthy and dirty enough to be happy. And it's, um, no, not that end. Here we go. It's nine and a half inches long. It's three and a quarter wide across here. Hmm. So this is, this is the trouble with me not having had a chance to look anything up. I don't know what comps are for the prices. So this is, it is in great shape. It is a vintage one. Um, $7, number 16. Seven dollars, number sixteen, for the fun little spoon rest that says, "My kitchen is clean enough to be healthy and dirty enough to be happy." Seven dollars, number sixteen, pickled tink. Pickled tink. Every time I see your name, all I can think of is a drunk Tinker Bell. Whoops, I wrote this backwards. That should go there, and this should go over here. Kitchen clean spoon rest. Okay, Let's sit you in there. Donna. Yes, I have your I have your email, Donna. Come on, get in there. Okay, there we go. Good night, Mary R. Yeah, Donna, I do have your I do have your email now. No, you don't need to give me your info on there. I do have your email. It did come through for Donna Donna Dur Durentz. So, so let's see, get my, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see after the holidays, how all the live sales pan out, because there's quite a few people who've been doing two, sometimes three a week. I know Misty said she's going to be cutting it back now that the holidays are over. When she comes back in the new year, she won't be on um for as many sales in a week or as many lives in a week so i think the schedule will change a lot um so we'll see i kind of like having the night owl ones but that's not good for everybody but i wouldn't mind doing an, another one earlier in the day but keep it as another short one three hours by the end of three hours my throat was dying last night <laughs> so all right, let's see. Who's next? Who's next? Let's do these two. So some of you that were... Um, might as well take the number off because it isn't going to be that number. <laughs> some of you that were at the sale yesterday may have seen these. But I know we have different people at this night one. So I have a little pup. He's not missing an eye. I know it looks like that to you guys, but you can't, I don't think you can see it. He's got the one eye here, but this one is closed and there's tiny little eyelashes there. He's another neat hobbyist piece. I think that says, I don't know, 1989 maybe? It, it's very hard to read, but he is a cute little thing with his little hat on and his tie. He's all ready to go out on a date. Little brown, what would that be? A little brown Yorkie, maybe? So he is, um, the little brown Yorkie is going to be $5. He's number one. $5, number one. There's no chips or cracks. He's just a cute little piece. Nice little dog in his little top hat. $5, number one. I'll show him all the way around. Okay. 
Precious Lavender. I'll put him safely over there. Now, this one. I think the bottom of him says Aaron. And the bottom of this one has 89 and has E-O. But this is another little cutie pie. Look at that face. Isn't that a cute little thing? With her little ribbons in her ears and around her neck. She's so cute. California Thrifter, did I get you for the 1956 books? You mean the, the bird books or the tree books? I thought that was um, Serendipity and Kendra. Let me check here. Belinda was for 30. Um, the first one I'm seeing for the bird books was Nettie. And the tree books was serendipity was the first one for the tree books. So now I got to scroll back down. <laughs> oh. Yeah, where was I? I got your email. Yeah, no sales for Misty next week. She, she works so hard. Um, so Maria California Thrifter. Yeah, I just went up into the chat and looked. And you were not one of the top ones for the bird books or the tree books. And those were the only 1950s books I've shown yet. Um, so... What was the numbers of those two? Well, the bird books were number four. Nettie was the first one. And the tree books were number 11. And Serendipity got those. And then you got Ooh. in. There was a comment. There were two comments that came through in between you and um, Serendipity by Melanie. So Okay. So now, now I'll go back to our little puppy here. Uh, I, I don't know if she's, I mean, I did pick them up together. I can't figure out what she's got her paw on. You know, part of it's brown, part of it's green. <laughs> I don't know. But she is a cute little thing. I mean, she's the same. She's the same as he is. Um. And I think done by the same artist. Now, the neat thing, and I don't know if it's showing up in here, her fur looks almost textured. Now, you could kind of see it, I think, on the back of her head. Her fur looks almost like it's actual fur and textured because whoever painted it took a really light gray and went over certain spots so that it makes it stand out a little more. Whereas on the brown one, he looks like he's all um, solid color. But I just, I just love the face on this mold. I think it's absolutely adorable. And, and all three of them that I had were different, but one of them's already going to Tippy Winks. So, so for the, for the little white puppy, she's also five dollars, and she's number thirty-seven. Five dollars, number thirty-seven. Let 
Victoria H. Oh, Al. Aw, oh, hip behave. I'm already taking the meds. <laughs> okay. What else did I have here? We have this little guy. Now, I came across one of these before, and the company that made them was from Japan, and their name was Hin. Now, this one doesn't have its sticker. Hin has a red and gold rectangle sticker, and it's H-I-N-N, -N, and it's the same one. It's just a little miniature creamer, little cow. That is one big hole. Look, I can see myself. Uh, I know, I'm punchy. You know, being tired and muscle relaxers. Well, yeah, good thing to have a sale on. But I, I like how incredibly long the tail is. You got this little flip up right here. But it's really cute. No chips or cracks. Yeah, what would Vinny say about a little bull spitting milk out of its mouth? I'm sure he'd have something. It's three and a quarter high. And he's um he's four dollars number twenty-nine. Four dollars number twenty-nine. For the little white cow creamer. I mean, you, you know, you could put a little air plant in there. <laughs> $4, number 29, Kendra Joe. I still have to find Vinny's address to send him, to send him what I showed last night. <laughs> it's just too good. <laughs> so let's see here. We have this because this was uh, something that was on the other sale where it was somebody who was bidding things up and then not paying. And then I figured out how to nab them and find out the different names that they were under. So the email on the screen came back to me. Aging beginner, did you spell Verizon with a Z? There's a Z in the middle. And make sure it's dot net because that has that has often gotten a couple people that I've found had a problem because you know you don't think you just type Verizon. And a lot of people think it has an S in the middle, and it doesn't. It's a Z. Hmm. Okay. So it came back to you. Let me double check. Uh, that's pickled tank. I have pickled tank. Let me check the spam. Nothing in spam. Hmm. Pickle Tink, I do have yours there. Tammy, yes, Vintage Tidbits, I do have yours. I have yours from last week. I know we, um, I know every once in a while, like, we've had a little bit of trouble. Um, I know some, I know, um, Oh, I can't think who it was. Tried to email me and they thought it was NBKL965. And um, but it's it's the number one. So I'm not sure why it's bouncing. So I have Donna Durant, so I have Purple Love. Laura Melendez, which is Vintage Thrifted Treasures. That's from yesterday. So um, now in the in the 80s, there was a company called Portal that started making really good um, posters that were artwork instead of your typical 
rock band kind of thing. They actually were copying good artwork. This is a Bessie P's Gutman um, print, and it is called Love is Blind. And it's absolutely, this one is so cute. And it's called Love is Blind because she's got a brand new doll at her feet. And she could care less. She wants the well-loved little one. It's missing a foot. It's kind of bedraggled looking. She doesn't care about the brand new doll. She wants her dolly that she's had here. It's just such a cute little image. It's already matted um, in this. And uh, Kendra Joe, you used to use Verizon.net. Yeah, I, I will probably... We ha we're trying to figure it out because there's people that can't find this overstuffed house because they separate it all and it's all one word. So um, my son and I have been like playing around with how we can shorten that a little bit for an email, but I can't use TOH because TOH is trademarked for this old house and I don't want to get in trouble with somebody bigger than me with lots of lawyers for a trademark. So um, Oh, let's see. I have no Zillow. Go away. I don't want an estimate on my house. You're not getting my house. So, um, so love is blind. It's uh the print size itself is it's seven by five opening, but with the mat, it's eight by ten. And so this is just $4 and it's number two. $4 and number two for this lovely little print of uh, Love is Blind. So $4 number two. All right, Belinda. All right. Now, who's next here? Okay. Now, this is a set that it, it came out of my great aunt's house, which was also my great grandparents. I don't think it's old enough to be my great grandparents. They are. That's not your number. Um, they're egg cups. They're hand painted. They look like they've been thrown on a wheel. I mean, this one has a little air hole opening there, but they have these rounded lines. So I'm pretty sure. They were all done on a wheel. So somebody's little pottery thing. But they're they're all hand painted. They're slightly different, each one. Same color paints, but slightly different. And then there's this neat little thing that goes with them. So it's almost like a little breakfast set. You've got your four little egg cups, and then you've got this little thing, which you could put you know, uh, maybe little flowers in. And it's the same kind of clay. It's got the same little swirl on the bottom. Uh, they're the only thing wrong. Could have sworn there was a crack on one. I think it's this one. I can't. I don't see it, but the flowers are in the way. But there's a fine little line on the inside, which I think is a fine little crack to that one. And he's got a little chip on the bottom. And then one of them has a big chip there. And you can see on the inside a chip. But I do think they're really cute. I do think you could make little things for little air plants. Or you just even have them as a nice little grouping. Um, but there, it's a, it's a nice little set and I have no way to really know how old it is, but for the whole set, 
It's seven dollars number thirty one. Seven dollars number thirty one for the four egg cups and the yeah, it would be cute for an Easter display. And and I think this is just a little vase that goes with it, but it's all hand thrown pottery and really nice hand paint job. Everyone's Ooh. unique, but they're all in the same color scheme. So let's see who have we got first, Donna and Durance. I did it again. How much did I say this was for? Uh, eight, seven. Eight, seven, seven, didn't I? Brain is just gone. <laughs> Thank you. Seven. Okay. <laughs> the brain has left the building. I keep wanting to say Durance. It's Durance. There's an E in there. Oh, honestly. <laughs> It's been a long day and not enough caffeine. Okay, come on, come on. Over you go. Let's show this again. This is a neat little um, Dutch shoe. It is made in Japan. It is a neat little porcelain hand-painted piece. This came from, of all places, Holland, Michigan. Uh, it was a souvenir that I got from there. It's four inches long. Uh, with spring coming, you know, I really think this would be really cute. And, um, you know, and I really think would be cute on it. Not tulips because they're too big. But to have little Lily of the Valley coming up out of this. Or if you have some of those really short, they only get about that big, miniature daffodils would be really cute to force um, for out of this in the spring. But there's no chips. There's no cracks. I've had this since I was about six years old. So, and it was in the gift shop on the back of a shelf. I remember it being covered with dust and my mom didn't want to buy it for me because she kept saying I'd break it. I'm 55 now. There is not a chip on this thing. Not a crack, not even a scratch. It's blue. It's it's made to look like the blue and it's, it looks like all this flower pattern looks like it's hand painted, but it is blue. So this is, it is $6 for the blue decorated Dutch shoe. It's $6. It's number 33. But it is cute, and I think for spring, it would be really nice little thing to have some flowers in it. Melissa Lynn. Put you back there. So, getting space on the table. Let's do the funny little roosters. Here we go. I can hold them, right? <laughs> so you can see the paint job on there. It's a nice little vintage salt and pepper shaker set from Japan. And they're made to look like little jugs, but they have the holes are on the side, not on the top. And what, you're surprised I was selling the little the little shoe? I've had it a long time and it's time. <laughs> it's time for it to go. Um, the, the jugs here are not a pure, pure white. They're more like a really light, um, I guess that's called eggshell, but it's it's not quite a pure white, a bright white, but it's not really dark enough to be a cream either. It does have little gold 
um, little gold accents on the tops. There's a line around the top, down the handle. Uh, there's a little fine line around here. One has its stopper, the other does not. They do both say Japan on the bottom. But I, I just like the little roosters. They're really cute. They're really cute. And so this, there's, there's no chips, and I don't see any cracks, but there is crazing to the glaze, which you can see. And so this is a nice vintage pair that... Um, probably was from maybe the fifties. And so it's $6 for the pair number 15. The roosters. So the outline of the rooster is black, but the feathering is brown. And triple C. Triple C, who has them for six dollars. There we go. Triple C, make sure you send me an email because I haven't, I don't have your info yet. Let's do an offer up. Put my little mark there for what was an offer up. We're going to do the treasure craft. Now, I haven't looked it up in George's book because I haven't had the time. It is a really nice treasure craft spoon rest. Says Treasure Craft on the back. Says Made in the USA. It has its markings. You can see there is some wear to this line right here. Oh, I, I, Holland, Michigan is one of the places I really want to go back to. Um, so there's no chips to it. Does have the hole to hang up. Um, you see, like, how this is, looks soiled because there's no glaze there. There's I'm running my fingers around the edge to make sure I don't feel any chips anywhere. Little flea bites that I might not see but can feel, but I'm not finding any. And it's got this really neat butterfly on it. And it's one of their California pieces. <coughs> It's it's kind of tall though. It's it's ten inches long, but it's really cool looking. So the treasure craft we're going to start we're going to start the piece of treasure craft at seven dollars. As soon as Katie sits start, there we go and. But we're going to start at $7 for this lovely piece of treasure craft. As she hits, there's the start. Okay, so I see Triple C at 7, Melissa Lynn at 8. Um, if you haven't uh, seen George the Antique Nomad, you should watch some of his videos. He actually wrote the book on treasure craft, which you can get if you directly email him. He will he will not only um, sell it to you, but he'll he'll sign it for you. So let's see. I see a twelve. I see twelve dollars on there. It is a lovely example of treasure craft because all the lines and all the indents are in there. I see 14 for Melissa Lynn. So, and they did a beautiful job. I think, I can't tell, like the only thing that might be wrong is I can't tell if that white is a scuff because there is a little tiny white also on this one and it reflects. So that's the only thing I'm seeing that I think might be an issue. I see pickled tink at 15. 
And Melissa says she's out. And just a few seconds left. We're sitting at 15 with Pickled Tink. Oh, Tammy's sneaking in there with 17. Oh, 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 Katie's going to have to refresh. Boy, this was awful close. Melissa Lynn, I was laughing that you guys had to explain Canuck to Jeffrey. <laughs> that boy is so sheltered in some ways, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so Tammy Tammy did sneak in there Tammy at Vintage Tidbits see I can say it tonight that night when I had just taken the, the muscle relaxer and it made me loopy I was not going to say your name because <laughs> it just wasn't going to come out right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, it's a lot harder when you haven't researched prices. It really is. <laughs> All right. This was also in the video. Let's do this. This is um, fun with hieroglyphs. It's the full set. Like I said, you never know. You just don't know what we're going to find in my house. Now, the book is still in here. The ink pad is here. There's The book is in great shape. Now, here comes the real challenge. is trying to get one of these suckers out because they were fighting with me. There is a ribbon see if I can get one out. So you can see that it does look like they had been used at some point, but they're not all gunked up. The rubber is still nice and soft. I checked because when, when, when the ink, when a, when a rubber stamp gets hard, you just don't get the same Im impression. Uh, so they're all there, but it, it explains everything in this book of how the hieroglyphs were used. It gives not only the history, but it also gives you the key so that you can write in code your own secret messages in hieroglyphs. And it gives you this great cheat sheet. So there's 24 rubber stamps, the guidebook, the ink pad. Everything's in there. I, I guess we probably used it once. Um, because for a brief time, Mike was really into Egyptian stuff. And it's it's all complete. It's all... I mean, it's still got the original stickers of lift flap to open and all that. So everything's still in there. And it was published by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's really kind of cool. And I thought, well, why not? <laughs> Somebody might want it for, you know, for fun. Or I, I like I like just this part just to decorate with. I think it's got great graphics to it. So this is um, this is seven dollars and it's number twenty six. Seven dollars, number twenty six. You get the whole kit. You can have fun with it. Um, or you can have it for a kid to have fun with it and they can learn some stuff. And I'll just write Egypt set. It's seven dollars and it's number 26. Yeah, I'm kind of not surprised that I don't have any takers. That's okay. <laughs> that, that is okay. You're, you're not required to bid on anything. Just be aware that you're going to see a wide variety of stuff from me that you may not see from other people. How heavy is it? Hmm. Ooh. That is probably, uh, that's probably, let, let's see, wait a minute. That's 16 ounces right there. That's a little under. So, 
16 fluid ounce. That's not a weight, though. But probably a little under a pound, but close to it is probably the weight. It is a neat piece, though. Somebody's playing with their knobs. What? They're painting their knobs. They need special knobs. Boy, I could just be as bad as Vinny on this discussion. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to go there. <laughs> I can't wait for the day when in the spring when Vinny and I get together because it's just, I'm sure we're going to have to edit stuff out. <laughs> We both have that kind of wicked streak sense of humor. <laughs> I get it, honestly. I grew up with four brothers and a Boy Scout troop. So I grew up with all guys. And, you know, they're real quick for the mind to just go, Poof, you know. <laughs> so I come by it, honestly. <laughs> um, here's a neat little piece. This was my mom's. I, I don't know if it. I mean, there's there's nothing in here to show that it ever had a music box in it or anything. And it's got this little, um, this there's a little, uh, I could feel it. There's a little piece of foam under there. The only thing that I see is wrong is that, let's see if I can do it so the light hits it. The, the, I can't quite get it. So the fabric... Everything I do is putting it in shadow. So anyway, the fabric inside is coming off a tiny bit right here at the edge. This is metal, though. It's metal. It's got this great cutout cameo, which um, feels like it's probably plastic. It does have the mark Japan down here on the bottom. And it is just a neat little jewelry. Uh, it's not a jewelry casket because don't they aren't the caskets the ones that have the glass edges around them? So, oh, do I have any crystal? No, I don't have any crystal. I actually, other than, I don't think I have that much glass here even this time around. So, uh, but this neat little casket, um, I'm trying to see. There, I mean, the hinge is in good shape. I don't see any scratches on the white. But I, you know, I don't, I don't know where she had it for a long while. But I just don't know where it came from. <laughs> so she's been gone since the '90s. So. Um, so it's probably from before that. I would say this is probably from the eighties or early nineties. And so this lovely little metal heart box, I mean, like I said, it, it is quite heavy because it is all metal. So the heart, the little heart box with the cameo look to the top. Um, this is. This is $7, number 40. $7, number 40 for the little jewelry casket that uh, has all the little gold bows around it. $7, number 40. Serendipity. RV, R, R, the RL Vintage Treasures. Good night. Hmm. I've run out of space to put things in the box. Oh, we shall put them over here. I have some space over here. A lot of the stuff from yesterday, if it's not in a box and out in the playroom, some of the stuff is still on the table. It's just on the back part of the table. <laughs> Yeah, it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful little piece. 
Um, let's do. Let's see if anyone would like these. So I have two vintage tray puzzles. 1979 for that one. And 1989 for this one. With the sad little clown. But they are vintage tray puzzles. They are precious moments. Not everybody's cup of tea, I know. Um, distributed exclusively by Baker Book House in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 1979 by Jonathan and David Inc. And this one is from Western Publishing Company, who does the little golden books, I think, in Racine, Wisconsin, which they're owned by Whitman. Jeez, Louise, don't scare me like that. An avalanche over here. Stay put, you little bugger. Scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> so... So they're nice little tray puzzles. They're in good shape. Um, the pieces don't have any creases on them. Um, oh, I take that back. There's a little tiny crease right on that spot right there. But, you know, they're, they're just a cute little thing. Um, neat little thing to decorate with. So these are $4. They're number 17. $4 for the pair, number 17. Puzzles, two. I'm making you laugh again, Katie, because I have an avalanche here. I Michael swears that someday this house is going to explode if anything else comes into it, and we'll be finding vintage stuff for a mile in a big circle. All around the house. Because the house will just explode. There'll be vintage stuff everywhere. Or there'll just be an avalanche of stuff. And he'll come home to find like little Nancy arms sticking out of the pile going, help me, help me. <laughs> I'm so jealous of Jeffrey and his store space. Can I tell you? I am so jealous of him with that space. That space is just my dream space. It's perfect. It's not huge. It's manageable. And it came with all those shelves. I'm so jealous. So very jealous. He, he, um, he did ask me in an email. He asked me, he says, he hadn't seen any of my videos. And we were, we were discussing, um, some some tips for somebody new to doing all this and he said you know i mean most people probably get bored with it in a year how much stuff do you have if you don't have enough stuff to last you you know at least three or four months you shouldn't really get started doing this because you'll find you'll go through stuff pretty quickly especially once you start doing live sales and I've sat there and I'm typing and I'm thinking to myself, how do I explain to him that I think I'm pretty set for having enough stuff to sell for three or four months? I think I've got enough stuff to sell for three or four years. <laughs> yeah, little did he know. <laughs> So I told him, I was like, you might want to go watch my very first video where I explain how I ended up with all this stuff. And he messaged, he, he sent me an email back and went, oh my God, how many people did you kill? <laughs> it's like, nope, I didn't have to. They all just natural causes. So, but yeah. <laughs> So, um, New Year's is coming. <laughs> Little did Jeffrey know. So, I have, this is going to make a lot of racket, so hang on, because I want you to know it works. Okay, it doesn't work. 
perfect, perfect, but it works. Um, it does have, I, I don't know what, like down here, some of the paints come off and there's a little dent, but I don't know what on earth this is. It will not come off of there. Uh, I hate that there's a shadow there, um, but that little mark, it won't come off. It, <laughs> glad Misty's not here. She'd be having fits, but it does have this big old clown on it. That woke the dog up. Oh, poor puppy. And it does, <laughs> time to, <laughs> I need new glasses. Time to get the magnifier out. U.S. Metal Toy Manufacturing Company, made in the USA. I do know that name. They made a lot of tin toys and a lot of tin little instruments and noisemakers and horns. Um, so, so we have this wonderful vintage uh, New Year's noisemaker. And I think the only reason he's, oh, see, no, I think the only reason is that the little piece in here has actually kind of unbent a little bit. So if you bent it, it's because it's at an angle now. So if it were bent straight, might make more noise. But obviously it makes enough noise because it's waking up people's dogs. <laughs> Virginia, hello. Hello. Well, welcome to Nancy's Nut House. Uh, no, actually, welcome to the Night Owl sales. Uh, so I haven't looked him up. I know these old tin things can be crazy, but I don't want to be crazy. I want to share the wealth and still make some money. But he has got those condition issues on the back. Um, if you do like clowns, he is a neat, he is a great graphic, but he is, let me write this down, noisemaker. So the noisemaker, the vintage tin noisemaker is $8. We're going to make him $8. I know that's probably cheap. I don't care. He's $8. He's number nine. Isn't that a Beatles thing? Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. It's on one of their albums. Eight dollars, number nine, vintage tin. The front has, it has a little bit of scratches along here that you can see under a bright light, but they haven't damaged the yellow paint. The only real issues are on the back where you don't see it. He is a great little piece. Is it the white album? But it's $8 for number nine, the vintage New Year's noisemaker. You haven't seen, seen Vinny for over a week? Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Ever since they had that outage, there have been all kinds of bizarre issues. And you might want to double check who you subscribe to because I've been hearing in the in the chats and in other live things I've been at, not just resellers that do vintage stuff, but I have some channels that I watch where they they do other types of, they do pop culture kind of stuff. Um which is its own vintage market. And yeah, revolution number nine. I see that. Thank you. Uh, but they have said in several of those that people are seeing their sub subscriberships that they have subscribed to. They're seeing some of them have been dropped or occasionally some have complained that they had things pop up that they never subscribed to, but they're suddenly in their list. So, so YouTube's just been doing wonky, weird things ever since that big outage. And yeah, Vinny, Vinny was here last night, but luckily Vinny showed up at the tail end. Spoilers. So, so, so we're still good. <laughs> so let's see. Is this signed? Let's see if this one's signed. 
This one's not signed, but it is a unique cookbook. This is from the Angel of the Sea, which is in Cape May, in Cape May, New Jersey. If you've ever, if you've never been to Cape May, Cape May has all these fantastic, um, just incredible, like, there's all houses like that all over the place. The architecture that they have saved is amazing. And my favorite was there's one place that had in the porch railings, they had tile work from the 1876 Philadelphia exhibition where it was the celebration of a hundred years of the United States. And they had put the tile work into the actual wood framework of the porch. And every time the porch has been restored since then, they have kept it exactly the same, just replaced the wood and left the tile work in there. And it's just amazing, amazing place to the architecture down there is just stunning. But the Angel of the Sea is one of the bigger bed and breakfast down there. And this is their cookbook. And I love how the sticker here says, rated as one of the top 10 bed and breakfasts in the United States. How did you figure that out? There's a lot of bed and breakfasts in the U.S. <laughs> Angela, I do know this. If you don't watch and hit a thumbs up or comment on some of your subscriptions, they don't show up in your feed. Um, because I, on my regular YouTube thing, there were people like Rachel and June disappeared and June's kitchen disappeared. And I'm a Patreon patron for June. And Rachel and June are a couple. He's Japanese. She's um, she's American, and um, they're they have some fantastic. They have some fantastic stuff. And he has a cooking channel that teaches you how to make some basic Japanese dishes. And it wasn't showing up. And Sharla in Japan also wasn't showing up. And here it was because I hadn't watched them in so long. It had taken them out of the rotation. As soon as I watched them and hit the thumbs up a couple of times, then they started showing up in my suggested feed again. But if you don't watch some of those channels every now and then, the algorithm just kind of like kicks them to the back burner. So that's why it's so important. If you see, you know, if you're watching something or a live sale, Rachel and June and their kitty, see Pickled Tink, you know who they are. I love Rachel and June. They are, they are an amazing couple. I can't wait to see them build the house. Um, but basically, yeah, they, uh, the algorithm is just strange. <laughs> so back to the cookbook. The cookbook is a first edition. I think it was probably just a one-time printing. It's from 1994. It's in great shape. There's no marks. Part of the collection of books that I inherited there were hundreds and hundreds of cookbooks and this is this is one of them and i thought well you know when i was looking for stuff tonight i thought why don't i start throwing a couple of these in here so you have the angel in the sea for breakfast and tea time so let's see if i can get an idea of the recipes i know the intro to it gives a background of the family that built the the angel of the sea the house and gives a history of the house so this one has breakfast entrees baked fruit bread muffins and coffee cakes and tea time goodies and you know a lot of cookbooks don't necessarily give you stuff that's fun for breakfast <laughs> so they have i still want to know what a dutch bunny is that one always cracked me up but uh that just looks like some kind of a biscuit thing for breakfast. And any plat books? What's a plat book? What's what's plat mean? It's your dream to live in a Victorian house. Oh, hon, be prepared for the upkeep. They're gorgeous, but they have issues. 
I like the rum cake and the cranberry nut bread that are in here. And there's a really nice artwork on the back. But it's um, it's a great cookbook. It's in wonderful shape. It is six dollars, number fourteen. Six dollars, number fourteen, for the Angel of the Sea cookbook. Tammy Vintage Tidbits. Okay, Tammy, you're going to be expected to bake us all scones <laughs> and show them on a lot, show them on a video, and let us know how they are. If Katie can do it with that god awful Jello, <laughs> too many ghosts in Victorian houses. Oh, there's one here. And this house isn't Victorian. <laughs> Shows, okay, so what was that about Platt book? Shows ownership of land in states or counties. Oh, like deed records. No, I don't have any of that. I wouldn't mind finding the deed records for this place because there's some questions here I can't figure out, and the Wetherill family couldn't help me either. So the original deed for this place has a different name for the property than the Wetherill family. So, but the house was built for Sarah Wetherill, whose father built the elementary school. One of the streets along here, side streets named for the family. Uh, the Wetherill family, um, God, they were huge in this area and out in the Midwest because they helped Zane Gray get his book started. They helped with the Pueblo Indians and helped protect that land and make it into a national park. They're still very active out there. So I would love to see the, the records of the property here that explain how come there's a different name for the land. So... So your farmers and shows acreage. Oh, okay. I actually have a farmer channel that I watch. There's a kid named Cole the Corn Star that puts out a video every day, and they have a big farm that he and his, his family are doing. That kid's amazing. Really a brilliant young man. So Cole the Corn Star. Of all things, I never thought I'd be watching something like that, but he's he's makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, it could have been in somebody else's name. Um, because all of this, if you go back to the 1700s, all of this went from the original house across the street all the way down to the big Chester Rural Cemetery, and it was all dairy farm. So at some point, though... Between then and 1911, stuff all got broken up, um, and they got out of the dairy business. So, um, but for my house, no, it wasn't renovated. It was it was built to her specifications, and they actually built it all the way over to the side of the property line to cut to compensate for the big magnolia tree had just been planted. Because a lot of her paperwork is at Widener University. A lot of her letters and her journals. So I have to get over there again and do some more research on her. She's, she's buried up the street, too, at the very first Friends Meeting House in the United States. was here in Chester, and it is nine blocks down the street from me. I have not used a metal detector on my yard, but boy, I'd like to. Corn the Star Renovation? No, I don't know that one. There's a kid named Cole the Corn Star. And uh, I think he's a trip. Let me see if I can find him. Here we go. Just to broaden our people's horizons. Horizon, sorry. There you go. Call the Corn Star. There's his channel. <laughs> 
He's also one of the reasons that I also got interested in him is that if you go back and find the videos about his grandfather's house, he inherited his grandfather's house and it was full of old stuff. But you should see this house. It's a gorgeous, um, probably not, it's probably, I would say it's probably 1920s. And inside's got some stunning woodwork that's all still original. And he's, he hasn't gutted all that. He's kept it. And so you, some of the videos aren't about the farm. They're about him inheriting the house, what they've done to repair it, what they're still doing to repair it. It's great watching the stuff on the house. It's pretty cool. Yes, hoof trimmers do make some serious money. A friend of mine has horses and... She's had to get the hoof trimmer out a couple times. So they make serious money because they only do house calls. So this is going to be an offer up. We're having so much fun chatting, too. <laughs> Realize we've already had almost two hours go by. It's just been fun. This is what I might do if I have enough time left on StreamYard um, on Christmas Eve because I can't guarantee I will get home in time to have a live sale. But I might pop on and just chat for an hour so I can answer questions. And So we have the matching saucer. We have the cup, the little dancing couples. There's on each side. Um, they Their jackets are dark blue. Because I see that's looking up kind of dark. And they um, there's no chips, but there is there is some crazing to the glaze that it shows up mostly on along this side right here on the saucer and they are marked provincial designs by Nikko Japan N I K K O so I don't know what Nikko means I know what Neko means if it were N E K K O Neko means cat but that says Nikko and it is a neat little cup. It's really cool. Um, it's got the same marking on the bottom. There's no chips or cracks. It is really cute. So we'll do this one. Yes, crazing is character. Crazing is cool because it, it helps show age. That's the wrong pen. Where did my red one go? There we go. So, Nico cup and saucer. We're going to do this as an offer up. I just thought it was a charming little piece. I picked this up somewhere. And we're going to start for the cup. We're going to start this at $6 for the cup and saucer when Katie gets the timer going and hits start. We're going to do $6 for the cup and saucer. It is such a cute little one. $6. There we go. $6 for the cup and saucer. It is really cute. There's no chips, no cracks. Just a little crazing that mostly shows up on the saucer. Cup doesn't look like it has any. But it is really nicely done. Hmm. What's that? There's an air bubble spot on the glaze on the back. So I see triple C at six. For the cup and saucer, triple C is at six. I see I have her email. Uh, Brenda Young's email. Oh, Vinny's address. Good. I'll need that. But we'll be cute in the Pennsylvania Dutch Hoosier. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> I don't have one, but I know what it means. 
my kitchen's such a bad layout. I can't put much in there. There's no room to put anything. The only cabinets are low in the hutch. It's just a goofy layout that was tacked on. When they when they added on to the house in 1935, they mutilated the kitchen. Okay, so six dollars to triple C. All right. That's another piece down. Okay. Let's do this other offer up. Now, I know Jeffrey had one of these. I don't remember what he did. He probably got more because, of course, he's a bigger channel. But it's it's called an ice cube paperweight. And I think he said the name of the maker. But I, I never had a chance to go back and look. And I don't think my camera is going to do any justice to this. So there's a fish on each side and there's little controlled bubbles inside. There is a bubble coming out of the mouth of every fish. And then there's that really neat swirl thing in the center there. It's really cool looking. Um, it is... Oops. It's basically it's it's two inches square. And it is a solid piece of glass. Um the bottom is not perfectly clear, but it's in good shape. There's no no chips to the glass anywhere. But they are called ice cube paperweights, and they usually have little fish or sometimes um little birds he said in them but i can't remember who the maker was because he he knew it um but and it, and being that it is a paperweight it is it is a little on the heavy side but it really is a darling little piece and i was so surprised when i saw it in goodwill and i had just seen it on his video so i of course snagged it so we're going to do this as an offer up and uh well, let's see i know what i paid for it so let's well that would at least give me two dollars if it only goes for that so let's um i'm talking out loud i just realized i just did all that in front of you <laughs> brain brain work <laughs> So we're going to start it at $6 for the controlled bubbles, little fish, ice cube, paperweight. Really is kind of cool. I'm not that big into fish, but I can appreciate the craftsmanship of having to make something like this. It's just very cool. So where's our time? When the timer starts, we're starting. There's our start. There you go. We're starting at six. Pickle Tank at seven. Annie K at eight. I've never, ever seen these before. And you see paperweights. I used to sell paperweights at the Delaware Art Museum. And I'd never seen anything like this. You know, I've sold paperweights that had that were bigger, that had jellyfish in them, and we would sell some that I know came from China, and they didn't look near as good as what the inside of this one looks like. Uh, we're up to 16 for Annie K. This is really, really well done piece by somebody that really knew what they were doing. I love the fact that every little fish even has an eye. Did you notice that when I showed it to you? That each fish has a tiny little blue dot for an eyeball. So somebody who really knew what they were doing put these together. Because they've done very well to get the fin shape of the fish. So it's anti-K I see at 16. That's where we're at right now. 
for the little ice cube paperweight. Such a cute little thing. Oh, 19. See 19 coming in there from Precious Lavender. So we're sitting at 19. It's funny. It's like when you when you've actually had to sell those things, you get to where you can just look at the paperweight and how it's made and you can tell which are the ones that came from China and which are the ones that were uh, an artist piece. And one of the ways that you can tell, and I don't know if my camera is going to show it, is this glass is clear like water. It just is really clear. There's no faint hint of a cloudiness to it. And the light reflects off of it like a good piece of glass. When you see some of the ones from China, there's just like somehow the, the glass just doesn't have that clarity. You can't really notice any... Um, smokiness to the glass you don't really see it that way but when you see them next to each other it's just so cut and dried because there's just not that brightness of the glass there's not that clarity to it when it's some of these pieces that you see that are made in china and sent over that's really a nice little piece so have we gotten through everything that was in the video no we didn't we got this piece so this is, I like Lipper and Man, and I think they get short shift. Um, Lipper and Man were another company that it says Lipper and Man Creations Japan. It has its little foil sticker. It also has it up here, but it's kind of faded where it says Lipper and Man Japan. And they made porcelain as well. And... It's I it's I guess like that matte finish that the girls wear. Um they're not a high gloss. And it, it reminds me of the suntan lotion commercial where it's the little girl with the puppy. And they just so many people just, just only look for Lefton or they look for Napco. But I really think these are pretty comparable. I mean yeah, Napco always had a heavy glaze on their stuff. They always had that heavy gloss. Good night, Diana. Yeah, it's we've hit 1 a.m. So, gee, we didn't even get to the basket of goodies. I want to get to the basket of goodies. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does remind you of Copper Tone. That was, that was the suntan lotion with the little girl. I get a kick out of the fact that he's got a little birthmark. There's there's a little red reddish dot right there. So he's even got a little birthmark. But it's a really cute little thing. Uh, apparently there's a there's a pair. Um I did start to look him up and they made a little girl that faces the other way. So he's a cute little thing, and he's what? Four and a half long. Not quite four inches tall. So, so our little boy with the dog. Um, he's a great piece. So he is eight dollars because he's he's perfect. There's no chips, no cracks. Um, there's only one thing I see that like there's this little mark right there that I can't tell if that's a little dirt mark or if that is ink mark. And I love the eyes. Look at all those little eyelashes. So he's eight dollars. He's number twenty four. But being that he's Lipper and Man, he's he's a piece that would have been from the forties into the nineteen fifties. Because by 1960, Lipper and Man, I think, stopped production. 
So I see pickled tink. Okay, now that's, I think, everything that was in the video that was the preview video. Do you guys want to keep going for a little bit for like another half hour and we see what the devil's in that basket of stuff that I just pulled out? Katie, are you up for that? Because Katie's the moderator. <laughs> Let's go exploring then, boys and girls. I'm not kidding. I don't always know what's here. <laughs> let's go exploring. Okay. Well, let's see. What is this? So I had hoped that I would have flea markets that I could take some of the vintage stuff to. But, you know, this year they all got shut down. Oh, I know what this is. This was my mother's. My mother was born in 1929. This says made in something. I think made in Czechoslovakia. But it's the little baby dish. I love the image inside. Now, it does have a condition issues. It's got two, two big dings there. But it's, it's the baby dish. And there is quite a lip inside there. Like, I could stick my finger way underneath there. But it helps keep it from getting spilled, I guess. But it is such a great graphic. Little girl with her kitty. So, Phil, yeah, field trip at Nancy's house. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> field trip at Nancy's house. So, <laughs> I know, I know some people collect these because they often have great graphics, but... It does have those two dings, you know? I mean, that's a that's a chunk there. I mean, and and it's not like you can't notice that it looks like Cookie Monster nibbled on it. Some baby got so hungry, they just chomped on the edge. So you saw, oh, yeah, yeah, this, I did try having the yard sale and no. <laughs> Nobody, no takers. So. It's a little baby dish, um, and like I said, so I know I had to age this because my mother was born in June of 1929, and the stock market crashed that October. She couldn't get away with crap. Her and her sister, they moved in, her parents moved into the great aunt's house with the great grandparents. There were eight adults and two little girls by the time they were able to move out of there again. So you couldn't get away with squat, nothing. You know, eight adults in a late 1800s twin in Norwood. I, I, they must have stacked them all up on top of each other. But I know she, her sister, and her parents lived in the attic. In the attic. <laughs> really packed house. But this is just $5.00. And it's number 18. Yes, they were very well behaved. You couldn't get away with anything. But if anybody would like it for that wonderful graphic, it's just $5. And it's number 18. You know, it is, it is a cute piece for that graphic. But, you know, it does have that chunk out of it. So, because it's not even something you could really use for an air plant because you'd be covering up the, there's something in this. Wait. Have to move the basket out of the way. This is old, too. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not selling you. You're going to go to Goodwill. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. But it's, it says Dollar Tree on the bottom of it. <laughs> so I, I think, I think, I think Swan's just going to go. 
doesn't have any chips. You know, for something that's Dollar Tree, he's surprisingly good looking. If you do mosaic. Hmm. This, I don't know where this would have come from. This is all hand woven. And then it's got more hand woven, like, netting inside. But this is all, like, woven straw inside. Um, there are some condition issues. There's, like, this real thin, I don't even know what that is. Because it's, it's silky feeling. I thought maybe it'd be a raffia, but, um, but this is natural cotton wadded up underneath. And then they put it over the top. And it's all hand woven. Bur yeah, I guess that would be burlap. That's an awful big weave for burlap. Um, but they've done all these little flowers. A really kind of cute little thing. The lid fits on well. So this is this is four dollars. Number six, if anyone would like the little um it it might be Filipino. I don't know. Um I do know that this came from Jewel T. So I do know that this, wherever it came from, not from the U.S., this came from my grandmother's house, and I know this was from the cousin that was a merchant marine. And he used to come back from all over the world and bring them stuff. One year he brought back a monkey, a live monkey. He brought back a marmoset as a present for my mother and her sister. Yeah. Poor little thing didn't live long, but <laughs> I still have the marmoset. They had it stuffed. It's in the hall closet. Needs to get cleaned, and I don't know how to, how to do that. I don't, I don't want to mess it up, but I think pretty sure that basket was something he brought back from one of his travels. Well, you're cute. You don't have a maker's name. Now she is bisque little girl sitting on the little love seat, her little fan. Nothing on the back, though. They didn't decorate the back any. She does have little... Somebody put little bits of felt on the on the bottom. So I guess so it doesn't scratch it. She's definitely bisque. She's got a little rose at her waist. That's intact. Let me take a look at her, make sure there's no... I don't see any chips. But let's make sure... Hmm. Well, it's not on the front side. But there's a little line right here. And I can't feel it with my finger, but my fingernail is catching on it. So I think there is a little hairline that goes to about here. Really hard to see. But she's a cute little thing. So now she's she's not any maker. I don't think she's as good as the lipper and man piece because she's she does have some things where you can see they kind of cheated. Like she's not as the face is well painted. But the dress is just a bare pink wash over it. You, the lights, you can't even tell. And they did the back so dark 
like and the the trim color here looks like it kind of sprayed into here so she is um she's five dollars she's number 23 five dollars number 23 Melissa. Okay. Let's sit her over here. Hmm, I need to find a new place for my teacup. <laughs> let's see. First, let's get rid of the tea bag. I'll sit that down there. Um, souvenir of Washington, D.C. Okay. That's one. I'm guessing this is the other. Wow. I can't get into it. The newspaper? Well, these, um, this stuff was put in the totes that was from when I was planning to have a, ah, get in there, have the flea markets for this year. So the newspapers are probably from last year. You really don't want to come the heck out of there, do you? Come here. <laughs> it's fighting with me every step of the way. All right, what do we got here for a date? Is there a date? I don't know. That's a sale ad. Any date on any of you? Where's that? What's this one's date? New York Times, Sunday, February 3rd, 2019. Some of this stuff's been there for a while. <sighs> <laughs> Beth's going to sleep. Yeah, it's got to be getting late in Texas by now. Um, one has the cork, the other doesn't. I don't see a maker's mark. The top has that. Does say, yeah, well, that's interesting. Okay, so they did it this way. And then the other, the picture is the guy, right? So that they put... If you want the pair to say it, they'll either say it that way or you have them this way and you don't see it, which is nice that they did it that way. The, the date on the newspaper was from February of 2019. So this stuff has all been sitting there um, and never got to a flea market. <laughs> So, <laughs> so they are a souvenir piece. I mean, it is a neat picture. He's, he's playing a flute, and she's looking decidedly unimpressed. With I, I can't get it close enough to show her face. But she's definitely not, not that huge happy smile. So, <laughs> so they're, they're an interesting little piece. Um, they are a souvenir, and that is a kind of interesting picture. But I don't know. I mean, nobody seems to like that little kind of 1700s look clothing. DC salt and pepper. So these are $4 vintage salt and pepper shakers with the gold tops. You know what I like to do with ones like these is these are the kinds you can have fun using them just every day in the kitchen. You know, they're, they're interesting, but at the same time, they're not. Nobody ever smiled when you tried playing your flute either? Yeah, well... <laughs> 
So they're just four dollars and number thirty four. I can't play any instrument. I can just sing, and the only reason I sing is I'm a very good parrot because nobody ever bothered to make sure I knew how to read music. Oh, you want them serendipity? Okay. Serendipity. All right, come on. Flip over. Time to flip the book over. Doctor, what are you doing? Yes, you behave. Oh, now you're going to lay on the floor with your back to me. <clears throat> I heard hissing. So he's, he's asleep in the hallway floor next to the radiator. And she decided to be snotty about it. <laughs> I have my father's clarinet, Katie. It's a wood clarinet. Oh, whatever this is, it's big and heavy. And I'm pretty sure that goes with that, I think. You're cute. That is a really neat looking angel. You know, I had two of those, so it should be a pair. Yep, it's a pair. Never used. Still have the original price tag on it. They were $6.99 each. Made in Indonesia. The back says, I believe in angels. Those helpers who are near, exactly when they're needed most, they then seem to disappear. I know them when I see them, whatever their disguise. They're patient and encouraging, resourceful, kind, and wise. Yes, I believe in angels, the kind that heaven sends, and I'm surrounded every day by angels I call friends. That's sweet. I like the artwork. Oh, uh, pre -write. and it doesn't say who the artwork is by. That kind of has that pre raphaelite look. So, so they've never been used. They're that narrower, you know, cup, but they're taller than the average cup, and it is a matched pair. So, you have that poem? It, it's really cool. Um, I don't know what to do for a price for these. Should I do these as an offer up, do you think? Since it is a matched pair, what do you guys think? Should we offer them up? Sounds like Katie. Yeah, Katie's a sweetie. Make sure the condition. Yeah. Not a mark to them. Why not? So we're going to do them as an offer up. They were originally $6.99 each. So let's. Let's start them at seven as an offer up for what the price of one would be. We're going to do both. So we'll start it at seven for the pair of angel mugs. I wonder how long I've had these packed away because I don't even remember a store called Matthews. <laughs> but they really are great. But what a great poem. I certainly believe in angels. Every once in a while, I've had somebody come into the into my life, do something, and then just vanish. One, literally, within the space of an hour. But such great mugs. So the start has gone. It's $7 for the pair. 
which, you know, is great. I mean, if I had to list these on eBay, I'd probably list them at eight bucks each. Um, but that's such a neat, uh, neat angel pattern. I can, I know that I don't know if that would be from, you know, in the Raphael and oh, Michelangelo, th that kind of period. It has that look, but then you have the pre-Raphaelites kind of artwork, which copied that kind of stuff. So I can't tell if that's like a Donatello angel or a Raphael, or if that's something from the pre-Raphaelites from the uh, late 1800s in England. She's carrying a bunch of lilies. So it's probably a painting for around Easter. But it's $7 for the pair. It's a beautiful pair. $7 for the pair and Tammy. Angel Mugs Pair. $7. Tammy, Tammy Tidbits. <laughs> I lost that red pen again. There we go. So let's see. What else is in here? Wow, there's a pattern you see often. It's a little creamer, but it's got a single... It's got the one little half, what they call a half-blown rose, where it's not open all the way. And it's got two little buds. Backside has a bud. Um, there's a little gold edge going around. This is a pattern from... Um, it, it was very popular in the 50s, in the 60s. You can even find little single rose stuff. Mail one to Tammy and the other to Michelle. Okay, wait a minute. Let me get this written in here. Okay, so one goes to Tammy. And one to... Michelle, comfy, cozy. Yeah, I think that'd be a sweet idea, one to go to, Michelle. I saw her video um, while I was getting ready after I had that, that half-hour nap. Um, her video giving the update about Kelly. Um, that, that would just be awesome. Send her a little angel thing. So I will I will get that to her. That's a great idea. Um, I like little things like this because if you have um, plants, it's real easy to use this for just watering if you've just got two or three little ones or just one to use it because it's got the really nice long spout. So, so these are great. Oh, she did get the GoFundMe link set up? Good. Good. We all are, we all need to uh, put that out there. So this little picture, it's not marked. And if anyone would like the little picture, um, this little picture is just three dollars. It's number five. Three dollars, number five for the little rosebud picture. If anyone is interested. So I have one similar to this. It has different flowers on it. And I do. I keep it in the kitchen. And it's just for the um, the, the cactus plants. Because cactus don't take a lot of water. And I just I fill it to the top. And I just go right down the row for the few plants I have in the kitchen. Let's sit that there. And that's for pickled tink. So, yep, February 2019. Though, actually, there's no, no being sure that that's actually 
when I packed it up because I saved the newspapers. Even the basket, it's an older basket, but I really like the basket. So basket stay. My little I have a couple of old I have a really old berry basket from it supposedly was Nana's grandmother's, which would make it uh not Nana's grandmother's, um, Pop-Pop's grandmother's. So it would be Alice who's hanging in my hallway from the Civil War period. Where did she post the link? Oh, it's on Instagram. I don't have Instagram. And if there is a way, Katie, if there is a way you can find that link and get it on to, to this and post it in here, um, that would be awesome. Because I, I don't have Instagram yet. Probably the next upgrade of a phone, will I will have it. This is an older piece. This was something we found in my great-grandparents' house, too. It's just another little picture. But I can't tell if that's supposed to be a baby pumpkin. <laughs> But it's a neat little orange with the green. And this is all figural. All these leaves, you know, they're all dimensional. There is a chip right there. And there's, I feel it. Where are you? It's hard to see. Maybe if I turn it upside down. There, there's a chip right on the very tip. I can feel it. I can feel a rough spot. But in this light, I can't really see it. And I don't think it's... Is it showing? I mean, I can kind of... Like right there. There's a chip right there. I can feel it. And then, of course, there's a little bit of wear around the edge here. But... Um, this is just a cute little thing. You know, I, ha I have two of these. Um, I have one, and I use it in my, my fall decorations, and I put dried flowers sticking out of it for in the fall when I used to be able to do that. So my other one's packed away somewhere. I lost the ruler. But it's just... What? It's just three inches tall. No maker's mark. It is thin porcelain. I mean, I can look it up. I can see light coming through the porcelain. So, um, this is another one. We'll just, I mean, I know it's older. It's vintage, but let's just make this one $4. Um, cause I would bet that this one is from before 1900. So this one's four dollars, number twenty-seven, for the little pitcher, which may or may not be a pumpkin under there. Four dollars, number twenty-seven. All right, Nettie. Okay. What else is here? So, oh, that was, yeah, I vote pumpkin, too. I've always just assumed it was a pumpkin. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, anything here that came out of that basket is I do have these. They're two vintage cupcake picks. So they're old. They're that old hard plastic. So they're what's called styrene. But they're just two roosters. And you have the two. One's kind of pink. And the other one's white. And that came out of that basket too. Fly, where did you come from? Ugh, 
annoying little buggers. We had one day slightly warm, and then we suddenly had a flies get into the house. They like to hang out on the porch out there. We had one go flying around a live sale two weeks ago. Thought I got rid of all of them. But there's just these little guys. Um, and they're, they're really well painted. I mean, the faces are really good. So the little, the little rooster picks are just $3.00 number 19 they're just three dollars number 19 if anybody's interested i collect picks i like finding ones for the different holidays and i have a piece of styrofoam and i i put a hole in first because sometimes these picks are really fragile and then that way i have them all lined up like i have all my halloween ones all lined up on this piece of uh, styrofoam that I had painted black. So, but they're just two cute little roosters. Oh, Melissa. Okay. You know, I, I think they're cute. I did think about sending them to thrift you, but I was like, I don't know that I mean, she wants stuff that's holidays. So Melissa Lynn. Now, what is, what is this? All right. Here's the last thing that was wrapped up in paper. Oh, that's interesting. So it has, and it's written in the, in the accent. I've been walking on the railroad. So it, I'm not kidding. I've been walking on the railroad. <laughs> Oh, you want me to send them to Sarah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have, because I'm trying to, I've been trying to convince her that if I send her a bunch of stuff, would she make me a snowman one and we'll do it as trade? I'll show you guys. I've been starting a box for her. I had this tiny little porcelain thing and... I had this. This thing is really old. Uh-uh. Come on. Get your little feet out of the... Oh, you bugger. I'll fight with it later. But it got its, it's got its foot through the little piece of lace. Isn't this funny? It got a little, little flower on his head. <laughs> it's a weird-looking little chick. His feet are all wire, and then it's wrapped with embroidery thread. <laughs> oh wait no sarah vintage crazed you're right not that's a different sarah you're right that is a different sarah but i do know she'll get a kick out of this because like this is another one that i know she's going to go bonkers over sarah at thrift you so i have a couple of little things in there but I, I know I have some tiny little um, Valentine's Day ones that I was looking for to send her at Thrift You. So we need Sarah. Okay, send to Sarah at Sarah Vintage Crazed. Okay. She like roosters? The other Sarah. There's actually another Nancy. I don't have her address, I don't think. Because I don't think she's actually gotten anything from me. I'm double checking the names on the list of the old sales because they're all right here in the notebook. Yeah, she hasn't she hasn't bought anything. So send me her address and I'll make sure they get sent to her. Because I yeah, I don't have her address. So where did I put that cup? This is the last thing that 
came out of that basket. So this is the last thing of the night. Kind of reminds me, because it's train stuff, it made me think of Aaron, which is um, Jeffrey's boyfriend, because he, he has train layouts. But it's a neat glass. It's really nice shape. It's got the nice shine you want to see on the transfer. So it doesn't look like it's ever been used. Um, no, no, no nothing for a maker on the bottom. It's got some a little bit of weight because this piece here is is thick. Um, but it is a neat transfer. It's got all the music for I've been working on the railroad. And it's got it's got the guys on the little push cart, the push pull cart, and he's got his little metal lunchbox there. Just a different little kind of piece. And so ah, he should probably go up on eBay, but I'm not worried about that. I got plenty of stuff to put up there. So he would be, say, $6 for the railroad glass, if anyone's interested. He's number 21. $6 for the railroad glass, number 21. Okay. Okay, Nettie. Good night. The very first little bears? No, they. I don't think they did. Let me double check. No, the little bears did not sell. Do you want to see them again? Oh, there went the clown. <laughs> Yeah, I still have the little bears. I still have the little bears. That's the parents. I just can't figure out like <laughs> what the little the little doctor one just cracks me up. Cause everybody like the children all have something. Well, two of the children have something to do with Easter. Because he's sitting on an Easter egg and she's got a little chick coming out of an egg so donna the um the bears were six dollars if you would like them oh no oh these would be cute for a printer's drawer they're nice and small and i love the children i think the children are adorable especially the little the little tiny one with his truck i mean he's only about an inch high Okay, they were $6, and they're going to go to Donna Durrance. Um, well, let's see. What didn't sell? Pickled Tink, what was the first thing you can remember seeing? Because just about everything from the beginning sold. And except for the bears here. Now they're sold. The um, the Egyptian, the fun with hieroglyphics set didn't sell. The two precious moments puzzles didn't sell. And the noisemaker with the clown didn't sell. I had a vintage tin noisemaker. I don't want to wake up anybody's dog again. It's a great image on the front. Um, the back has some, like, I don't know what this stain is. I couldn't get it off. And then there's some wear to the paint there. So. You got... Yeah, you came in. Yeah, everything before you got here, Pickled Tink, um, had sold. Except for the bears, which we just sold now. So, 
So, Tammy, if you saw that, then everything that was above this sold. So, there weren't many. <laughs> Send it to Jeffrey so he could shush Misty with it. Oh, <laughs> you're putting evil ideas into my head <laughs> because he bought stuff last night. He bought stuff at the sale last night. So I still have to pack his stuff up and send it to him. <laughs> Don't put evil ideas in my head. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't tell her who said it. I'd just send it to him and go. <laughs> this was from an anonymous person who said this, and I wouldn't tell him who said it. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> I've seen his channel. I know better. There's too many times where he just kind of says stuff or forgets the camera's on, I swear, and he just, like, makes these comments and then it's like, oh, oh well, never mind. <laughs> and it's like, we already heard you, Jeffrey. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> He's a trip. <laughs> Honestly, I would love to be there on a shopping trip with him and Misty and Barb. I just think that would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be a heck of a road trip because it's, Two hours for me to get to where Jocelyn and Andrew are for Crazy Lamp Lady. Um, so, and she said it took nine hours for her to drive to where they were when they all got together with George, the antique nomad. So, you know, that's that's kind of a hike. <laughs> that's kind of a hike away. But it still would be fun. So Vinny will probably be the first one I meet up with. And, uh, and do, well, see, they didn't meet in Ohio. He's in Ohio, right? And. <laughs> oh, you're the one that, okay, you're the Tammy that Misty has mentioned once or twice that you two are in the same town. Yeah. <laughs> Misty never sleeps, honestly. I think Misty's kind of on par with uh, Sarah from Thrift U because Misty has emailed me back at like 3 a.m. It's not uncommon to have Sarah <laughs> from Thrift U email you back at 3 a.m. <laughs> wow. Is the couch for sale? I don't have a couch. <laughs> oh, you to the no sleep. Well, I know I'm finding a conk out tonight. I mean, I, I just, it's been busy. And, and yeah, I'm a bit of a night owl too, because that's why I jokingly call these the night owl sales, because we're all kind of night owls. And then, you know, and then there's people on the West Coast that don't get to see a lot. Of, a lot of the live sellers I've noticed are either in the middle, in, middle of the country or to the eastern side of the country. So they don't always get to see stuff. Oh, well, Stan, that's because you, you, you know, this is what happens when you inherit three estates and then get downsized out of a job. So you've got to empty the storage unit somewhere. <laughs> Stan, you can go back and watch my first video. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so he might be. But I mean, it does. When you see this backdrop, it does look like it does look like a hoarder thing. That's why I thought it was so important in the very first video I did to explain what had happened, how it ended up with all this stuff. And, you know, the other problem too is that, that I don't think I talked too much about in the videos is that the state of depression you get hit with um, didn't help. 
it really did not help. I kind of functioned because Mike was here. So I had that push to make things stable for the nephew I was raising for my son. Um, but when I got downsized out of a job, then I couldn't pay the tuition for the private school anymore. So he had to go live in a one room apartment with his father. Um, so then you kind of, that, that kind of sank me for depression because then I, then I did become very overwhelmed. So it just kind of stagnated for three years where, you know, I was, I was selling stuff on eBay still, but I just, some days were just very, very difficult and it was hard to get more than, you know, have more than 30 listings at any one time on eBay. So my eBay store though, is probably going to hopefully have a chance to get refilled in my Etsy store. I keep talking about getting it done and just don't, don't get the chance to, um, because I've been pushing so hard to do the live sales and get all that taken care of. But the next two weeks, like I said, I probably won't have the sales because I can't guarantee I'd get home by 11 because I have to help close the store. And there's a lot of, because it's the while you have that deli area, there's a lot of food protocols and we've had such a changeover of staff that we don't actually have anybody, uh, left on second shift that knows how to shut the store down. So I can't be sure that I would, I would get out of there in time. Yes. Depression absolutely stinks. Absolutely. And they finally, finally got a, the doctor to listen to me and they put me on some medication, which was a big help to help even things out. And then I've done a lot of self work on my own. Um, Cause I kept thinking, you know, I can't, I can't keep living like this. <laughs> this is not working. Um, the, YouTube's a very helpful tool for some things. So, you know, the hardest part about digging out right now, Tammy, is the fact that there's no um, place to go. Fibromyalgia, mm, no, they suspect lupus, which will give you some of the same problems with pain. Um, so yeah, Katie, Katie's nodding off. So it is time to go because I'm beat to having to work and not have that much sleep tonight. And with it being holidays, it's crazy. So I think we'll end it here and, you know, we might get a chance to talk and answer questions, maybe Christmas Eve. So I'll see you guys then if I don't. Have a good holiday, you know, have a good Christmas. I know for some people it's hard because families can't necessarily get together. Um, yeah, it, it's been rough. Donna, I completely understand. The first time we really dealt with anything where the house started getting full was when my father died. He was the first one. And in six months, we had 11 funerals. It was bad. So we'll talk another time if you want. You have my email now. And uh, so you guys have a good holiday. And Donna, I'm serious. If you if you need to talk, shoot me an email because I've already been there. I've already been through where because when my mother passed away, it, it was rough. It was very rough. So. Guys, have a good night, and if I don't see you, have a good holiday, and in the new year, we probably still will have these late night ones. I might, I might once in a while, once a month do an earlier one. That's, that's kind of the game plan. We'll see how that pans out, and if you want to shop my stuff, well, you know, there is an eBay and an Etsy store, and, you know, I'm, I want to clear out the stuff from here and get those refilled with things, so. Have a good night. You gotta let Katie go to bed. I need to get to bed. Thank you. I'm working on Christmas Day. I'm fine with that because it's double time. That heater isn't gonna magically appear on itself. <clears throat> so good night, everybody. Stay safe, stay warm if you're in the cold areas. Good night. <laughs>